Hello, welcome to Embody Abundance. I am your host, Alyssa Williams. I am a celebrity stylist, investor, speaker, and business mentor. I love all forms of abundance, and I want to take you on the water slide of abundance and breakthrough. So let's go. Ready to get styled in 2022? We're rolling out mini style sessions over at Your Virtual Closet Concierge. Head over to www.yourvirtualcloseconcierge.com to book a free style consult. Okay, everybody, welcome to Embody Abundance with Alyssa. I am over the moon excited to talk to this guest today. She has been a friend since high school. And for those of you guys who know, I went to high school in the Philippines. I was at boarding school. So that means that this person has known me longer than most people in my circles. And I just, and not only is she an amazing friend, but she also is one of the wisest people I know and has been through gosh, so much and has come through with what I'd like to call post-traumatic re- or post-trauma resilience, um, which is, you know, the, just the process of going through really difficult things and coming out more empathetic, more kind, more compassionate, and definitely stronger. Um, and not just like hard and stronger, but truly stronger. So mm-hmm. I am honored to introduce you to Alyssa Loving Hawes. I'm excited. I this this is gonna be a free form. Like who knows what the what this will hold. But Alyssa, welcome. <laughs> um, and yes, we're both named Alyssa. So if you've seen all my stories or anything like that, then and yes, we also live together. So there's quite a quite some overlap. <laughs> um, but Alyssa, welcome. First of all, I just would love to know how you are this morning. How's your heart? Um, amazing. Thank you for that amazing introduction. (laughs) I feel so loved. I really appreciate that. It's crazy that we've known each other that long, like longer. Yeah, I think you've known me longer than most people in my, definitely in my immediate circle. So Alyssa is the real deal, I'm telling (laughs) you. (laughs) I think sometimes you can see people online and there's like a a version of themselves, but she is who she is. Like she is... For years, she's been that way since high school. So, just yeah. Like, oh my gosh. Actually, real I'm deal. really curious. So, what was when you first met me? I, I'm going to do this. When you first met me, because not very many mm-hmm. people know this version, like yeah. like 15 year old Alyssa. So, when you first met me, what was your thought, or what was I like? I thought you were you were though like the cool, fun girl that everybody liked. You're like the popular girl, but not like too cool for people. Popular, like. The cool girl that everybody liked. I, I think that's who you are anyways. Like, <laughs> you're cool, but not too cool for everybody else. Like everybody, I, I think this is the way it always was. Everybody felt loved and accepted by you and wanted to be your friend. But because you were cool, but you weren't too cool for people. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I, I hope, hope that's, that's how, still how you are. I hope that's how I was. High yeah. school was fun. I don't have bad memories from high school. And then meeting you, I so I met Alyssa when she was in the eighth grade and I was in tenth grade. This is so funny because <laughs> now here we are, like I know. Santa Barbara, California, and Alyssa had just come back from the United States and there was another <laughs> Alyssa. And I was like, Who is this person? <laughs> like, she has my name and all of a sudden now I'm not like like the only one, but I couldn't hate her. I just loved her immediately. Like (laughs) I I was like, wait, she's amazing and so cute and so sweet and deep and wonderful. And everybody was like, oh my gosh, do you know Alyssa? And I was like, well, she's in eighth grade. Why would I know her? And (laughs) And she has my name. But then of course I met her and was like, instantly she's amazing and the best. And something that I really just remember from high school, and this is so fun, but was that you and Aubrey Bauk, which, no, not Aubrey. Who was it? Whitney Bauk. Whitney? Whitney's my younger well, sister's younger friend. Sister's fr- was, I'm still friends with Aubrey. You're still friends with Aubrey. But I just remember you taking these, like, amazing, like, fashion photos. Oh, no, that was her younger sister. Yeah, with Whitney yeah. Bauk, which, by the way, you guys all need to follow Whitney Bauk. Yeah. She's, like, um, a fashion writer. And and so you guys would take these, like, very, very cool they were very like Vogue inspired yeah. photos. And I just remember thinking, wow, what creativity these girls have. And 
it just was like so inspiring to me that you guys were just going after it and doing it. That was so fun. Yeah, me and her, my little sister and Whitney loved doing that in high school. I mean, I still love doing that. Let's be honest. <laughs> we need to do that more. Um, it's so interesting. I can't, I'm like, it's so funny to think about like just us in high school. And I know. I don't know. Maybe we've changed and not at all. For everybody listening, I just have to say that Alyssa and I have the most amazing conversations. We've been living together for six months now, and there doesn't it's not a day that goes by that we're not talking about some kind of deep and meaningful, expansive conversation. And mm. I sometimes have thought we should just have this all recorded because, mm-hmm. you know, it's every day for us that we have these conversations, but I don't know that this is really what everybody talks about all the time. So for people that don't know you, tell me a little bit about what you do now. So I work with mainly women, but also men, helping you find your heart. And uh, a lot of it is sort of healing work, but I tend to say, I love to say, nobody has to be fixed. Everybody needs more love. And so how do you receive more love in the places that you feel scared, you feel ashamed, you feel sad, you feel hopeless, you feel triggered in any way? So just helping people get to their heart center. And I often walk people through uh, finding their little girl or little boy inside and then finding a deep sense of love and compassion for who you are. And actually, that's why it's fun that we're even talking about who we were when we're little because just thinking back on that little person um, it just gives you like another sense of like love and compassion and just appreciation for yourself. I like asking people about how they were when they were a child or when they were in elementary. But yeah, I think uh, everybody needs more love. We always need more love. I'm, I don't show up to fix my clients. It's just how do you receive more love and then teaching you to do that so you can do that for yourself on a daily basis and go back to that little girl or that little boy and find love and a deep sense of compassion and appreciation for yourself in every situation, which I think that changes everything. If only the world could have more love, Mm -hmm. more love for themselves. That's the answer. It's not, not that anybody has to be fixed, but everybody deserves more love. And how did you get there? You know, cause this doesn't, or what was your path to get to this? Wow. Okay. That's a long story, but, um, I would say I struggled with a deep sense of shame and unworthiness uh, growing up kind of in a very religious background um, and uh, just sort of feeling like I was never enough and never having a deep sense of love and compassion for myself and um, having a lot of anger and shame and, you know, unworthiness, self-hatred and It was a slow journey for me of learning the answers for these things, a lot of research, but then working with a woman who taught me a lot of what I do with my clients. She's incredible. Her name is Laura Duncan. Um, I still highly recommend her and her work. Uh, Laura Duncan Consulting, if you want to look her up on Instagram. Um, But she changed my life in so many ways. Uh, And then I would also say a big factor that shifted a lot of things for me was I was engaged um, and my then fiance actually he taught me a lot about love for myself and love like deep love and compassion he was one of the most loving accepting people I've ever met Um, but he was in a motorcycle accident and had a traumatic brain injury and we were in and out of hospitals and the ICU and um, well ICU first hospital rehab for quite a while and that journey taught me a lot about love and compassion and uh and hope and faith and um I mean I appreciate what you said Alyssa about you know post-traumatic resilience because uh, yeah I I love that I I mean it was obviously traumatic I do think that there was so much resilience that I gained from it too and so much that has been integrated now into the work that I do with my clients of helping them really find love and compassion for themselves and uh, come out of things that were difficult in a more powerful and more loving and a more hopeful way. Yeah, I think with trauma, it's, it's so interesting because I think there's this fear of even, or I just know there's a fear of going into the hard places or, or going through hard things. But what I love about even that term post trauma resilience is that you do go into those really really hard places experience the pain love it 
Um, you know, whether that's, there's so many different ways of healing. And really when you do have that healing, experiencing pain can actually expand your capacity to feel and expand your capacity for resilience and for compassion and for all of that, which so many of my friends have experienced really difficult things and have found ways to heal, process it, process. And it just makes people different, I think. You know, when you've gone through something, you have a different Mm -hmm. love for life, I think, a different, like, reverence for it. I don't know. I know when, for example, when my ex-husband went through his just mental breakdown, I never thought I'd ever, I I just thought, how could this ever, (laughs) how can I ever recover from this? And, um, And I know that we had a similar timeline for when our significant others were you know, really broken mm-hmm. and and what that was like and to just kind of walk through it. And then now I feel like I can deal with hard things mm-hmm. and I have the tools to really process, to grieve and to grow um, and to just experience the good things in life and appreciate them, whether that's, you know, simple flowers or a nice beach walk or friendship or a good conversation you know you just I I feel like that definitely taught me amazing things so man I have like so many questions to ask you and so many things um that we can talk about because it's just like endless but I think one of the things that I want to hear from you and is if somebody's on their healing journey or let's just say they have had something really really difficult happen what do you do Hmm. I love the thought that life wasn't designed to break you apart, but to break you open, I think I've heard someone once say, and uh, I think that, I think we've had this conversation a few times, but it's it's all here to teach us love. Um, more love for ourselves, more love for others, more love from others, more love for God, more love from God. It's just, I think that the whole point of life is love. Um, And that if you're going through something really, really hard, that it's actually, well, this is advice. It's designed to open you to more love. But on the other side of it, be where you are. So sometimes we have this, like, I'm going through hard things and I should be experiencing this now, or I should Mm -hmm. have grown now, or I should be helping other, there's, there's a lot of shoulds around like our grieving process or our pain. Um, so I also just, I mean, I can give you advice of like, this is what, it, this is the point. This is where you're going. It's learn. It's really, it's designed to teach you love, right? But uh, if you don't feel like you're there yet, there's nothing wrong with you and you are allowed to be where you are in your process. And part of the grieving process can be anger and mm-hmm. anger can be a part of learning love. So it's, sometimes we get caught up in this I shouldn't be angry I shouldn't be sad I shouldn't feel shame but it's all it's all there to teach you and you're allowed to it's all there to open your heart Mm -hmm. and you're allowed to be there and you're allowed to feel it and you're allowed to be in the process and and if you're going through something hard and no one's given you permission yet like you're allowed to be where you are and you're allowed to feel what you feel and there's no shame in in feeling pain around it um, or in any of the way that your process is going right now. And for some people, certain things take longer and some people things are shorter and everyone's heart is hard, you know, mm-hmm. but you deserve to have love. You're worthy of love right now in the process, whatever you're experiencing or feeling. Oh, I love that. I have to say that that's one of the things you have taught me is mm-hmm. to help me be where I am. Mm -hmm. and just I'm sad or I'm angry or this is what I feel and Mm -hmm. I think the wonderful thing is that when you give yourself permission to feel the thing and feel it completely like Mm -hmm. if you're feeling angry like scream in a pillow like feel angry then it gives it almost then allows it to dissipate Mm -hmm. and you know my childhood was very much like Alyssa you can be angry but you can't scream Alyssa you can you know I was always such like a very feeling child and really didn't have that permission I think my my, you know my mom had four children and it was like there was only a range of emotions that I was allowed to display 